a push for allegiance to a foreign country. Congresswoman Omar caught on tape making vile anti-Semitic remarks suggesting that Jewish Americans hold dual allegiance to the U.S. and Israel. Republicans pushing for Omar to be removed from the House of Foreign Affairs Committee over the controversy. Democrats don't have the vote to even use censure. Anyway, joining us now is former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich for reaction. And by the way, the host of the new podcast, Newt's World. Um, what does it mean about a Democratic Party that has a severe bigotry, racist, and anti-Semitic problem and can't get enough votes to condemn it? Well, I think it tells you how strong the forces of the left are now. Uh, there's a deep anti-Semitic, anti-Israeli bias on the left. Uh, there are a lot of people on the left who'd be very happy if Israel disappeared tomorrow uh, and who feel 100 percent on the side of Hamas, even while it's firing rockets at Israeli cities. Uh, so I think what we've seen is that over the last 30 years, a growth in the anti-Semitic behavior on college campuses and a growing willingness uh, by some Democratic politicians to be very openly anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. And I think the second thing is that a lot of the younger militant members, whether they're anti-Israel or not, they are deeply opposed to Nancy Pelosi trying to exercise any discipline well, at all. She's not the speaker so anymore, clearly. Pelosi is about... Yeah, she's not the... I mean... Well, I mean, she's clearly losing... Look, she is losing control of the House. Uh, they may be forced in a desperation move to change the House rules to block Republicans from offering anything, uh, which would, I think, lead to chaos. But she, she can't get her party to stay together. And if, if you're in a moderate district, if you're in a district that Trump carried, uh, or if you're in a district that's heavily Jewish, and you're watching the Democrats go crazy, and you are a Democratic freshman running for re-election, this has to be a really decisive moment. All right. Who do you let stay me, with? Let me I mean, ask you, you this. Know. So you come to power with the Republicans for the first time in 40 years. You and Bill Clinton decided you wanted to do great things for the country, and you ended up doing it. And I'm not a big fan of Bill Clinton, but you did balance the budget, uh, which we haven't done since, and a, and a lot of uh, welfare reform, so many big things. He even said the era of big government is over, end of welfare as we know it. You guys found a way to govern, even though you had opposing views. You see now the Russia collusion narrative is collapsed. So now they just move on to the next thing, which is the widest net ever cast to basically look into any and all things Trump rather than govern. How does that end? Well, I think it's going to end very badly. But, but let me be clear. This is, this is not an investigation. This is an act of hate. These are people go. they're basically saying, if you worked for Donald Trump as a private citizen, we're going to try to destroy you. We're going to make you hire lawyers. We're going to, we're going to make you go through public humiliation. I mean, these are normal, everyday folks who are not in the political arena. They're going to call in front of some of these committees and the most radical, vicious, nasty liberal Democrats are going to feel that they have a right to beat them up, to humiliate them, to lecture them. Um, and I think this tells you, I mean, we're, we're moving. I was thinking about, you know, James Tarantino wrote The Hateful Six. He could have written, you know, The Hateful Eight for the Democratic Committee chairman uh, and made a movie out of it. But we're, we have never seen, at least not since the Civil War, the kind of deliberate, vicious character assassination, not just at the you know, not at the president. I mean, president Trump's a big guy. If they want to fight with him, he can fight back. You know, it, it, but they're going after everyday folks. It, it, you know, when Adam Schiff Sorry. hires, when the author of the Steele dossier, Christopher Steele, doesn't support his own dossier, but Adam Schiff hires the only conspiracy theorist and person that does believe it, that tells you a lot. But, you know, it, when David Axelrod says, this is beginning to look like a witch hunt, this is like, and, and Mayor Bloomberg says, this lurch to the left, not going to end well. Um, when people like that, or saying things like that, I think if I was a Democrat, I might listen, but I don't see any hope that they ever would. 
Well, you don't know what's going to happen yet, because the truth is, as all these candidates line up to run for president, I, I don't think any of them want to get in a fight where the left hates them, is taking them on. So you see, over 100 Democrat House members have co-sponsored a bill that eliminates any private sector insurance. That's a 15% position. Uh, yeah. the, the, you're going to see a Democratic Party unacceptable to most Americans. No cows, no planes, no cars, no combustion engines. Everything's free, and we're going to confiscate all your money. Great idea. Um, well, and, and, no, and, no, and no children. Remember? Oh, yeah. you, can, you got to think of twice about ever having any kids. And the world's ending in 12 years. Today, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen went up to Capitol Hill to share a little dose of something called reality with Congress. We face a crisis a real, serious, and sustained crisis at our borders. We have tens of thousands of illegal aliens arriving at our doorstep every month. We have drugs, criminals, and violence spilling into our country every week. Illegal immigration is simply spiraling out of control. Now let's break it down to the cold, hard facts. In the month of February, 76,000 illegal aliens were apprehended at the border. That's just the ones apprehended a 30% increase from the previous month apprehensions. And from the year before, it's even worse. This is an 80% increase over the same time last year. And I re report today that CBP is forecasting the problem will get even worse this spring as the weather warms up. Uh, could be getting worse? Well, we could be looking, yes, at nearly one million illegals crossing our borders if the trends continue. If these numbers hold, every four months, we'll import the equivalent of the population of Richmond, Virginia, or Baton Rouge, Louisiana, into the United States. And this isn't a national emergency? Let's face it, most Democrats know this is a crisis. The sheer volume of crossers is overwhelming our facilities. And liberals then blame Trump when a migrant doesn't see a doctor immediately? As with their embrace of infanticide and reparations, Medicare for all, Democrats have gone far, far left on immigration. And now they are, in effect, for open borders. There are other options, uh, Ann Colbert said, there are other options to incarcerating and holding everybody Such by as? the thousands. Uh, there, there were programs that will enable people to go into our communities and, and to be able to be tracked in our communities. Whoa, she wants low jacks on everyone. What is that? Retract in our communities. They already put ankle bracelets on a lot of the illegal immigrants, and they just tear them off. Terrifying that she doesn't understand the basic facts of immigration. And while we're creating these grand new plans to hold illegal immigrants accountable and track them, let's not forget who's footing the bill here. Guess what the cost is? $82,000 per year per illegal immigrant in the United States. And then, of course, the children they have, and then the children are citizens, and then no one's deported. Democrats prefer to focus, though, on non-citizens, their treatment, their medical care, their, and, of course, their race. You wanted to separate children and families, and you wanted to do it with compassion? You have no feeling, no compassion, no, no empathy here. White babies would not be treated the way these babies of color are being treated, Madam Secretary. This is about color. We've opened our doors. You're tired, you're poor. Huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Except we now have our quota of people of color. It gets very dramatic when you whisper. Now, the Democrats can't play chords. They stick to one, maybe two notes, and they're always off key. For the record, Madam Secretary, are we still using cages for children? Uh, sir, we don't use cages for children in the border facilities that you've been to. Uh, they were not made uh, to detain children. To my knowledge, CBP never purposely put a child in a cage if you uh, need uh, a cage uh, like uh, this. Purposely or whatever, uh, are we putting children in cages as of today? Children are processed at the border facility stations that you've been at. Some of And the I've areas... seen the cages. I just want you to admit that the cages exist. Sir, they're not cages. Well, you know what that is? See it up on the screen? Right there.
That's a so-called cage that the congressman was referring to. But that, well, fed those, you know, kind of a fencing thing, it's, a, it's a, an enclosure for sure, was used by the Obama administration to detain illegal minors during their processing until they could be placed with sponsors. Now, where was the Democrat outrage when Obama was using the same fencing facilities that liberal do-gooders now deplore and make a big deal about at a hearing to get on shows like this? Well, instead of focusing on the surge of the border and the lack of facilities to house the people crossing the border, Democrats are throwing sand and throwing down the race card. It's about all they know these days. When the CBP Commissioner Kevin McAllian testified to the Senate Judiciary Committee that walls and barriers in key hotspots along the border had an immediate impact in reducing the crossings, Senator Dick Le du uh, Blumenthal, he didn't want to hear any of it. The numbers of border crossings are still at a historic low compared to other times in our nation's history. No, Senator, they're not. We're, we're on pace for over 700,000 crossings this year. Uh, that's closer to historic highs than historic lows. The commissioner is 100 percent right. Over 60 percent of the total apprehensions along the border are now illegal family units and unaccompanied alien minors, those under the age of 18. And new DHS figures find that those apprehensions of illegal family units have surged by 338 percent. But no emergency here, no crisis. And the apprehensions of unaccompanied children are up 54 percent. That's not dangerous for them, right? No emergency, no crisis. How about this? Because of the increase in violence at ICE, when we have families with children, we have to give every girl a pregnancy test over 10. This is not a safe journey. Girls are being abused, raped, and in some cases trafficked as part of these caravans. And it is despicable what is happening to these young people. Congress needs to get its head out of the sand and stop this madness once and for all. If someone crosses the border illegally, with rare exception, they should be turned back immediately. Family units or people posing as fam family units would not make this dangerous trek once word spread in their home country. Congress should pass this law. If you want to apply for asylum, that's fine. But you should do so in the safety of your home country. Or, as, as is beginning to happen now, once you're in the United States and you declare, you should be sent to Mexico until your case comes up for hearing. We have a backlog right now of 800,000 immigration cases. The current system today, it's obvious. Come on, everybody knows this. Democrats know this. It incentivizes human trafficking, the abuse of kids, and more illegal crossings, period. That's why you have the big jump. Any Democrat or any Republican who refuses to act now are the ones who are truly lacking in the feeling and the compassion and the empathy, not only for the illegal immigrants, but for the American people they're supposed to be representing. And that's the angle.